There. Anything biting? As if. Twenty years there's been fewer fish, but sometimes you can get lucky. Go figure. It's really odd. You seem to know the region well. Maybe you can fill me in a bit. I'd like to know a little bit more about the local legend. I was told that there's a monster down there, living at the bottom of the lake. It's not a legend. And how can you be so sure? Back when, the lake froze over earlier in the season. People would go out and make holes in the ice in the middle of the lake, then fish like that. Sometimes they would even set up these cabins for the winter next to the hole. The old folk always said you should only cut a small hole, just wide enough so the fish could be pulled through when you landed them. No more than that. One day, this guy who was kind of odd cut a really big hole. To make it easier, he said. In case he caught a really big one. You don't have to believe me, but he's the one who went into the hole. Backwards. Into the depths. In less time than it takes to say it, the monster's arm came through the hole, then dragged the poor guy down to the bottom of the lake. That's why the old folks say never make a big hole in the ice. Because of the monster that lurks below. And how do you know all that? Because the poor guy was my older brother. And I was fishing just next to him that day. So you think what you want. You have a good day, miss. Are you okay, sir? One more step and you were in the drink. I-E-N-O. <laughs> Pardon? It's me, Captain Obo. Obo! Proud commander of the... Uh, just this proud crystal. So don't you, sir, me. Well, delighted. Captain, I'm Kate Walker. I'm looking for Steiners, the clockmaker. If I fall in the water, Taylor, you'll be to go straight to hell. So don't... Don't fall in the water, Taylor, you understand? Bastards waiting for me. Who are you talking about? The monster of the lake is waiting for us all, miss. Ev everyone's time comes eventually. To finish the work. Come on, back in the fight. Because you can never lower your guard. 
never. Anyone here? I'll just take a peek. Nobody will ever know. Poor Captain. Even though his superstitions terrify him, he's obviously dreaming of a second chance. Given the number of seats, this must be some kind of ferry, some kind of transport. Someone stole three chickens last night. I bet it was those damn thieving yukels again. Yeah, we That's can't always nice accuse man the who foxes. Leave the you should go see about complaining to the mayor with all the thank others. Him. Ah, miss, delighted to see that you finally managed to leave the yukol camp. Yes, thank you very much for the pass. Well, now that you're at last here, you'll be able to taste my famous borscht. It would be my pleasure, but I do have to find Steiner the Clockmaker right away. Simon Steiner? Ah, in that case you should speak with Sarah, our young waitress. She's his granddaughter. I met that man recently. A certain Captain Oboe. He doesn't seem very with it. And he's been that way for 20 years, miss. 20 years. Can you imagine? He used to command the Crystal. The boat that made the crossing between here and the amusement park. On the other side of the lake. And he wasn't the same man then. Is Simon Steiner well known here in Valsambur? For a long time, he was rather popular. You know, he isn't just a clockmaker. He knows everything about mechanical objects. He repaired everything for everybody here in Valsambur. 
He also designed the amusement park on the other side of the lake with a colleague of his. A French automaton creator, if I remember. You could say, Valsambor owes a lot to Simon Steiner, miss. So when he got sick, I offered to hire Sarah to help a little. You understand? How are things in town? They don't seem to be going that well. If you ask me, the atmosphere is horrible. At least half the people don't want the U-calls right at our door. Most of the shopkeepers even made the decision to go on strike over what they saw as unfair competition. Also, Valsambor hasn't been the same in the last 20 years. There it is. I'm off. Thank you again for your help. See you soon, miss. Excuse me, please, miss. Yes? I'm looking for Simon Steiners. Simon Steiner is my grandfather. My name is Sarah. Sarah Steiner. Pleased to meet you, Sarah. I'm Kate Walker. Can you tell me where I can find your grandfather's workshop? Of course. You'll find his shop is at the end of the alleyway, on the left, just as you leave it, in the main avenue. Can I ask what you want with him? Because he's rather old, you know. I'm accompanying the Yukul caravan. Apparently your grandfather is supposed to be making a mechanical prosthesis for Kirk, their spiritual chief, who had a bad accident recently. Without the artificial leg, Kirk won't be able to go along with the great migration of his people. And on top of that, the Yukuls won't leave without their guide. You're accompanying the Yukuls? My god, you're so terribly lucky. When I was little, grandfather used to tell me all about their adventures, full of mystery and magic. You seem to like the Yukul, Sarah. I get the impression that's rare in Valsambor. It's true that when it comes to the Yukuls, people around here can be a bit silly. They go out of their way to make the nomad scapegoats for all of the town's problems since they got stuck here. But you don't, do you? Of course not. Grandfather told me that he has actually seen three or four of the great ostrich migrations in his lifetime, and he always really respected those strange people. He even made sure I would admire them too, you know. Do you like life in Valsambor? Oh, there's really not that much to talk about here, you know. I spend all my time here or with Grandfather since he got sick. There was no one who could keep an eye on him for you? We can't afford it, I'm afraid. I also think I prefer it this way. My Grandfather is my only family. I guess you're pretty close to your Grandfather? Yes. Of course he can get a bit grumpy. Especially the last few years. But he's actually really adorable, and you should see the work he does. Give him a few cogs and springs, and he'll give you some unbelievably incredible invention. He almost makes mechanical objects seem alive. I see exactly what you mean. I used to know someone like that, too. The only problem we have is that business collapsed when he got sick. I really do believe that if I didn't have the waitressing jobs to make ends meet, we'd probably have to close up shop. Thank you for your help. I'll be stopping in to see Grandfather on my next break. Maybe I'll see you there. Yes, I hope so. Goodbye, Sarah. you no 
It's impossible. Hello. Are you Mr. Steiner? Mm. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Steiner. My name is Kate Walker, and I've come to pick up the prosthesis for Kirk, the Yukel spiritual guide. And well, dear Miss Walker, Dr. Efimova has informed me that the young man was not yet in any sort of condition to withstand the operation, and that... Mr. Steiner, are you all right? It... it is impossible. That pendant you have around your neck. I would be very obliged if you would entrust me with it for a moment. Please, Miss Walker. Mein Gott! An XZ-2000 automaton heart in perfect working condition! A compensating spring memory! Pendulum ventricles and small mechanical pumps! Everything seems in excellent condition! Donnerwetter! Where on earth did you steal this, Miss Walker? What? Are you calling me a thief, Mr. Steiner? I haven't stolen anything from anyone. This is all I have left of my friend Oscar. Give it back to me right now! Ah, so... And yet I am actually very familiar with this type of precision mechanism. An infernal precision. Incredible, unique expertise. For this was a Varlberg automaton, Miss Walker. Yes. It was Hans Varlberg who designed this object. Tell me, did you know him? Oh, yeah. He even lived here a few years. We did a lot of work together. He taught me so many different things, you know. So it is useless to try and make up silly stories, Miss Walker. And I am afraid that I am not about to allow you to leave here as long as you have not told me the truth about where this object comes from. Mr. Steiner, Oscar was a very special automaton. He inspired almost human emotions. But today he doesn't exist. He isn't dead, of course. Because what has never lived cannot die. Oscar was just dismantled. It had to be like that. All that I have left of him is that heart, a heart made of metal. It's far more than just a heart, miss. It's far more like a kind of mechanical hard drive. A computer that is full of cogs, gears, and springs, but... <sighs> Mr. Steiner, are you all right? My heart... need... my medication... quickly! Just don't move. I'll go and get your medication right away. So, you would <coughs> abandon me to my fate? No medication in sight. A prescription?
Going by the smell, I'd say this cup was recently used for tea. A prototype for the clinic aviary? Make yourself right at home. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just own the place. Who would store medication in this mess? Kirk's prosthesis. But it looks like it isn't finished. A woman's writing saying, Grandfather, don't forget to take your medication three hours before dinner. An old press clipping. All that clattering must get really tiring after a while. Tea. Thank you for your precious help, my dearest Miss Walker. I'm afraid I may have judged you somewhat hastily. Don't mention it, Mr. Steiner. Tell me about the prosthesis. I need to take it back to Kirk very quickly, if, of course, you agree to let me have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have a few small adjustments to make. It involves very precise and meticulous mechanics, understand? Will it take long? I'm sorry to insist, but I also have to give a hand to those unfortunate Yukels. I need to help them get across the lake with their herd of ostriches. I'm so worried about them. Once the mechanical leg is at last ready, I can go to the clinic and bring back young Kirk to you. That way you only have to worry about what happens to the other Yukels. That's so nice of you, Mr. Steiner. But why are you doing this? Ah... Uh... I wasn't extremely nice to you earlier. And also, the way the Yukols are treated by the other townsfolk, here, in my own town, disgusts me. So I want to help those poor devils, even if I am in no way absolutely certain they should be crossing the lake. You want to talk about everything that happened in Baranor 20 years ago? How on earth did you hear about the story, miss? 
The authorities have always done everything that was in their power to keep this terrible business absolutely quiet. I read the ship's log that Captain Obo wrote at the time. Tell me exactly what happened there, Mr. Steiner. It has become a true hell on Earth since the time of the last great ostrich migration. Please join me downstairs for a moment, Miss Walker. I'll show you exactly what I mean. The film's missing. Baranor, the cursed city. Baranor, the martyred town. Baranor has been nothing but a field of ruins and desolation since a week after the explosion of reactor number three in the nuclear power plant. Balsapur is on the other side of the lake, sheltered from the prevailing wind, and fortunately it seems to have been spared from the deadly radioactive cloud. Our town was mobilized to go to the aid of our neighbors. Although our town's means were modest when compared to such catastrophe, there were nonetheless among us some brilliant mechanical engineers. In record time, they developed a small army of automatons capable of helping the affected people. Those men and dogs of steel could go where a human could no longer set foot without becoming seriously ill. Over there, they could be excavators, rescue workers, and treasure bearers. These automatons look just like my friend Oscar. I guess people put that statue up in the square in their honor. Yeah. Truly magnificent pieces, Nishtvar. The XZ-2000 model is most assuredly one of Hans's major masterpieces. Their mission was to bring back any survivors of the catastrophe to Baltimore, where the victims would receive the best care in Dr. Zemiatine's clinic. The Crystal, the fairy usually responsible for linking the towns of Baltimore and Baranor every day, carried the new type of rescuers to the scene of the drama and brought back the survivors of the catastrophe. So Baranor suffered the ravages of a nuclear accident. But according to that film, the automatons you designed with hands should have helped save lots of lives, right? I'm afraid that's not how things went. Because of Captain Obo. Ooh. Ah, that must be Sarah. Please come this way, Miss Walker. I'll introduce you. Miss Walker, may I introduce you to Sarah, my granddaughter? We've actually already met, haven't we, Sarah? I actually owe Miss Walker a candle. Thanks to her calmness and peace of mind, I'm still here and on my feet. She found my medication and gave it to me before it was too late. Donner Vetta. You don't mean you had another attack, do you? Ah, you're being so very naughty, Grandfather. You absolutely must let Dr. Zemiatine examine you. Come on, stay calm, my little child. When I go to the clinic to take the prosthesis to the young Yukol, I'll stop by and see the good doctor. Until then, why don't you make yourself really useful to Miss Walker? She's looking for some way to transport the Yukol caravan to the other side of the lake. Well, I think I've already found the solution. The boat in the film, the crystal, it must be the ship that's docked in the port. 
If it was able to transport the automatons you and Hans built, it could carry the ostriches across the lake. Ah, that's not a bad idea. But unfortunately, there's a slight problem of size, dear Miss Walker. What on earth do you mean? Obo became a poor wreck when he simply abandoned our automatons and Baranor. The coward now drowns his sorrows in vodka. He's convinced that he fled because of the monster in the lake. Heh! <laughs> Apparently the imbecile saw the monster, Himmelgott. So he went back on his tracks, abandoning all the automatons in Baranor, as well as the people they were there to rescue. Grandfather, I know you're still really angry with Captain Obo because he abandoned the automatons that you built with your friend Hans and Baranor. He was supposed to wait for them. They were going to take all the survivors they found in the rubble to the boat and then bring everyone here to safety in Valsambor. But in the end, when he got to the beach at Baranor and saw the disaster and all the dead, he became really afraid. The disease, the radiation. He must have had an uncontrollable panic attack, so he immediately turned back, dumped the machines on the crystal into the lake, and came back empty-handed to Valsambor. And the automatons have been there ever since, in hell. But who knows? Maybe today he'll want to sell. I'm sure Kate will be capable of convincing him to help the Yukels. I have to go do my waitressing shift in the tavern. Come by and see me later on, okay? Captain Obo will be there. All right then. I'll try and convince Captain Obo. Thank you for everything, Mr. Steiner. I don't know if I really should wish you good luck, dear Miss Walker. Baranur is only an open grave now. What exactly happened in Baranur? An accident in reactor number three. Negligence. Faulty maintenance. What do I know? Anyway, one spark was all it took, and then... Total chaos. The rare survivors were brought back here, to the Valsambor Clinic. So you and Hans decided to build an army of automatons. To help all the people who were left behind still stuck in the rubble in Baranur. Yeah. Hans thought that helping the town that had opened its arms to his amusement park was a duty. And we would have managed to do it in the end, too. If only that coward Obo hadn't left our automatons to rust because of his so-called lake monster. The evil monster of the lake. Stories to scare small children with, Miss Walker. Not an excuse for cowardice. Mein Gott. Are you still angry at Captain Obo for abandoning your automatons? Ugh. Yeah. Hans and I put an awful lot of energy into making them all, you know. We thought of everything. How so? Our automatons were designed to tirelessly go through all the rubble, piece by piece, in search of survivors. Administer first aid, and then take them back to the beach so that they could be safely embarked on the crystal. But because of Obo, none of that ever happened. How did you meet Hans Wahlberg? I met dear Hans when he had just arrived here in Valsambor, 20 years ago. What was he doing in the region? Oh, he didn't seem to have any particular reason. Always traveling. He stopped off here and there, then left again when the feeling came. Thank you for your help. Donnerwetter, Miss Walker. I need quiet and concentration if I'm going to complete this prosthesis.
Captain Obo? What do you want? May I sit down for a second? Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry to impose, but I actually really... You know, you kind of remind me of someone. The wife of the quartermaster that served on board the Crystal after the war. <gasps> Do you realize? He got married to the first cousin of the wife of a machinist. Oh, okay. That's all really interesting, but what I wanted to ask... <laughs> That's a really great story, really. Because did you know? So there. So the guy answers, I don't know nothing, Captain. Turns out he was hiding in the broom closet. <laughs> Hilarious. Irina, the wife of the quartermaster. Her name was Irina Malevna. Crazy how much you look like her. Oh, gee. It's getting late. I have to go. You can finish telling me the story another time, Captain Novo. Is everything okay, Kate? Not really. I'd like to ask Captain Obo if the Yukul Caravan can go on board his boat to cross over to Baranur. But I can't get a straight answer. He's completely sloshed. I'm sorry, miss, but I really think you're wasting your time. He's getting drunk again to forget his crimes, like he always does. To forget he wasn't brave the way a captain should be. Can you believe it? In Baranor, he just picked up and abandoned his passengers. And I know, he'll never want to see that cursed place again. I'm not sure that's true, lad. Even if he does drink a lot, the captain's a pretty good guy. Say the right thing, and you may be able to convince him. If I'm ever lucky enough to find him sober, even for a moment, I need that drunkard to listen to me. Maybe I can help you with that. I'll make him one of my famous small restoratives. After that, he'll want to sleep for three days, but at least his mind will be clear. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much, both of you. Don't mention it. The way the Yukals are treated here is an absolute disgrace, so if we can help out... Who knows what became of the victims and automatons the Captain abandoned? No, everybody hates the Captain for that. But nobody volunteered to take the Helm of the Crystal in his place to pick up the survivors. If there are any left in Baron Ur, they're all dead now, that's for sure. Grandfather says that the automatons would have broken down really quickly with nobody to maintain them. Has Captain Obo taken the crystal out of port since leaving Baranor? He's been far too drunk ever since then for that. And anyway, the port's been closed since the tragedy of Baranor 20 years ago. Do you think the crystal is still in sailing condition after all this time? I'm sure there'll be a few repairs to do, but Obo never stopped keeping it in shape, you know. He loves his boat, despite everything. Do you know why Captain Obo fled Baranor? He must have been completely traumatized by what he saw there. The catastrophe, the victims, and then the radiation. He unloaded the automatons on the beach, but he didn't expect they'd bring the survivors back right then. He just cracked, completely snapped. Full astern and goodbye all. Can you even imagine? Afterwards, he came up with that story of a sea monster appearing and attacking his boat. Yes, the old legend of the monster of the lake. Convenient, isn't it? Go see the captain. Sarah will bring you the restorative when it's ready. <laughs> Take this, Captain. This one's on the house. water on battens the hatches, swabs the deck, and opens the portholes. Hello, miss? My name is Kate Walker, Captain Obo. We met each other earlier. 
To what do I owe the honor of your presence at the table of the regrettably famous Captain Obo? The captain seems rather depressed. It would probably be a good idea to go easy on him. I'm listening, miss. This is good news, Captain. You're back at the starting block again. You have a new beginning, a new dawn. <laughs> now that's a good show of spirit, Miss Walker. What'll you be having now? It's my round. The captain knows he's despised in Valsambor. I'll tell him he can change all that. So what? Nothing more to add, then? I'd rather you listen to me. You're my only hope of finding a solution to my problem. <laughs> Do tell me about it, please, miss. Because the Yukuls and their ostriches are stuck here in Valsumbur, it's causing a serious problem among the people in your community. Plus, the nomads have to continue their great journey. Only you, Captain Obo, can defuse the situation by taking them on board the crystal. You're very wrong, Miss Walker. Everybody will tell you that I'm incapable of giving a hand to anyone. I should use what I read in the captain's log to convince him. Right. Go on. Ignore Obo, the gutless wonder. I took a look at your logbook, Captain. I read what you wrote when you fled Baranor. So in that case, you know what I am, right? I'm damned and rotten to the core. Let me tell you something, Captain. I know that you need to redeem yourself. And I just may be able to help you do that. How in the hell? Take the Yukul caravan to Baranor in the Crystal. The migration must go that way. Baranor? That's impossible. You can't go to there anymore. Never again. Too much happened. Too many died. But also there, in the water, I saw the hellish red eyes of the monster of the lake. Beast as big and long as my boat. Ask your Yukul friends what they think about it. They call it the Kilak, the evil spirit of the lake. The devil guarding the doorway to hell. Captain, I think it's time for you to clear your head of all these fanciful stories designed to scare people. Everywhere in the world where the water is deep, people have come up with legends designed to keep children safe. Come on, get up, Captain Obo. Show me what you're made of. Hmm. Miss Walker, first of all, I have to say that you're an incredibly stubborn woman. I'd even say that you're a real, um... Anyway, I'll stop there. But I get it. And what am I to conclude from your appraisals? All right, all right. You can get your gang of little savages and board the crystal. I'll take you. Oh, thank you, Captain, really, with all my heart. And thank you on behalf of the Yukels. Oh, but be careful now, Captain Girl. You're not there yet. There are two conditions, and they aren't negotiable. First, if we stop by Narodas. It's a little town just a bit south of Baranor. That will mean we avoid the most radioactive zones, but it won't actually take you too far off your path. And second, we also sail by day. I'm not going to finish up on the lake monster's plate. And it sleeps during the day. The beast is usually a bit of a night owl, anyway. I accept, Captain Obo. In that case, all hands on deck now, sailor, because we've got work to do before we can hoist the anchor. Come on, Kate. You hurry off and meet with the captain before he changes his mind. I'll go tell Grandfather to join you on board the Crystal with Kirk. Thank you, Sarah.
All right, Captain. How are the preparations going? There's quite a bit of work to do before we can hoist the anchor, Miss Kate. Yeah, I bet. The ship hasn't set sail for ages. I'm sure everything has to be overhauled. Well, the coal needs to be stocked up. As for myself, I'll look after getting the water tanks ready to be filled. Take this. It's the code you need for entering the hangar where the coal is kept. You actually need it to use the crane to load the coal onto the crystal. Don't forget to open the storage hatchway first. How do I open the hatchway to the coal storage on the crystal? Just turn the wheel on the ship's bridge, sailor. What do I need to do in the hangar? That's where you'll find all the coal you need for the crystal. One container should just about be enough. And don't forget to use the entry code for the crane that I just gave you. What do I need the crane for? This here is for loading all the coal you get from the hangar onto the ship. Use the code I gave you so that you can access the control post. I'll take care of that, Captain. We need to set sail as soon as possible, so better hurry up. A folding chute, covered with coal, too. A folding chute, covered with coal, too.
Come on. Oh, gosh. I should be able to put this button onto something else. Apparently you did a very good job loading all the coal, Kate. Right. Everything's ready, so we can start filling the water tank. Now we need to connect the water tower to the crystal. 
then climb up there to manually activate the water flow mechanism. All right, show me how it's done. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. There are too many barnacles on my keel for me to play the acrobat. All right, all right, I'll do it. When you're finished, come and see me on board. There's still a lot to do before we're shipshape. <laughs>